this is the Chichibu Red Wine Cast 2023. Less than 12,000 bottles released. Some have clearly made their way to London. If you have a bottle or a dram, I hope you guys enjoy it. Hmm, not the most insightful review on Campai Planet. Let's go again. The Chichibu Distillery is located in Saitama Prefecture in, you guessed it, Chichibu. They started distilling in February 2008 and on the 1st of September 2023, they dropped this. Chichibu Red Wine Cask 2023. What's inside the 700 milliliter bottle? Well, it's 50% ABV, not cask strength, non-chill filtered and natural color liquid. It's a vatting of whiskies, fully aged or finished in X red wine casks, mainly Cabernet Sauvignon from the US and Pinot Noir from France and New Zealand, rounded out with some Muscat Bailey A from Japan. There are actually a number of wineries in the Chichibu area itself and a Winewood Reserve bottle forms part of the distillery's Ichiro's Malt Leaf Series core range. 36 casks were used. Liquid was fully aged in two of these barrels, but the rest are finishes of different lengths. But given that the average finish length was five to nine years, we can think of them as double matured, with the first maturation taking place in 200 litre first fill bourbon barrels made of American white oak. These casks were married for a few days to help the flavor settle before bottling. The youngest constituent whiskies used are six years old and the oldest are 13 years old, all leading to an average age of nine years. 11,800 bottles were released, making it one of the largest Chichibu drops to date. Half were sold domestically and half overseas. In Japan, it was priced at 16,500 yen, including tax. The distillery themselves are aware that red wine cask finishes are divisive. There are a lot of memes about red wine cask whiskey out there. Wine cask maturation can be notoriously tricky. Director of whiskey creation at Dunfeld Distillery, Matt Mackay explains. The wine brings with it its own natural acidity and also tannins, both from the structure of the grapes, but also potentially from any cask that that wine has already been matured in itself. And that presents whiskey makers with a real challenge in terms of balancing both that acidity and those tannins into their whiskey, not only to harmonize the flavors, but to harmonize the textures so you don't end up with a whiskey that's just too dry or too sharp. Back to the task at hand. As you can tell from my initial review, I was rather neutral. So I tried it again and again and again, and eventually sat down in a field to give this bottle a proper review. So I'm here at Kena Chichibu, about to review the Chichibu Red Wine Cask 2023. Let's check out the color. That is a beautiful red amber. It's very inviting, so let's see if that color translates into something interesting on the nose. Hmm. Okay, interesting nose. We've got, it's almost, uh, like a, a peaty type smoke actually. A lot of spice. And obviously the characteristic berry notes that you would expect from a red wine cask whiskey. Yeah, a bit of cinnamon there as well, bit of sweetness. Burnt caramel hiding underneath the tannins and the red wine character of the whiskey. But it's not shining through as much as I would have hoped. Despite all those different characteristics being there, it's a pretty monotone nose. Kanpai. Fairly tannic. I gotta say, initial thoughts, I'm not being wowed by it. There's a disconnect between the nose and the palate. So I was kind of expecting a bit more depth of spice, 
Instead, I'm just not really very excited by what's there. Some berry notes. You also get some intensity, some real red wine intensity, almost like you've actually got some grape peel in this glass. It is pretty overpowering. Yeah, sort of struggling to piece it together. I guess the whiskey's not inspiring me to come up with my usual verbiage. There's a bit of sweetness on the palate, kind of toffee, fudge, caramel notes, which normally I love and I would suggest that that enhances the whiskey, but it kind of clashes with the tannins and the spice that come from uh, the red wine elements of the whiskey. On the palate, there's a kind of rum-like quality. And unfortunately, it has some characteristics that I associate with over-oaked whiskies. The finish is long and near the end of the finish, some of the sweetness that I talked about on the nose and the palate does start to emerge. But unfortunately for me, it's a little bit too little too late. So what's the verdict? This feels like a slightly watered down version of some of the Chicxubu red wine single casks that have been released. The 50% ABV definitely mutes things compared to the cask strength single cask red wine Chicxubus I've tried, such as this Takashimaya Bayer Select bottling, weighing in at a whopping 64%. This is what a Chichibu red wine cask should taste like. This one, it's fairly balanced in the sense that there's nothing that's overly offensive about the whiskey. It's that there's just nothing that's making me really want to go back for more. I would say it's probably one of the least Moorish of the Chichibu core releases that I've ever tried. And I say that having tried this whiskey several times since its release on the 1st of September, 2023. Long-term viewers of Camp I Planet know I'm a big fan of the Chichibu Distillery. I'm always interested in the Chichibu Distillery's experimentation. I absolutely love uh, what they've done since 2008 and they've transformed the whiskey scene in Japan. The new distilleries that have started, you know, in the middle of the previous decade are known as Ichiro's children for good reason, but this is not the best example of what the Chichibu distillery can produce. Until next time, kanpai.